Once you've been pigeonholed into something, it can be hard to get out. Maybe you're a sports player, movie director, or something a bit more relevant to this video, a YouTuber, and you're known for doing a particular thing. Whether focusing on this specific avenue was intentional or not, after some time you're now that person. The squash guy, the horror guy, the RTS guy. It's difficult to break from that mold when your audience is predisposed to be interested in what you've always done, and potentially not so when you want to try something new. And in games development, this is nothing new. Making games is hard enough. Trying to explore new genres with every release would be prohibitively difficult for most. Not impossible, but difficult. As you probably notice yourself, companies and teams become known for what they seem to be inherently good at, and where they continuously excel. Bioware, RPGs, DICE, shooters, Visceral, rest in peace, horror, Rockstar and CD Projekt Red, open world. You get the idea. What I find particularly interesting though, is when an established developer known for a particular genre tries their hand at something entirely different. Often it brings fresh perspective. New ideas that existing developers might fail to see, having been building their own siloed experiences for years. And while these occurrences are usually not the norm, you do see them from time to time. And they're especially noticeable when it's executed on well. Take a Sobo Studio for instance. Initially known for adapting Pixar movies into adventure games, they would go on to garner acclaim for A Plague Tale Innocence in 2019. And again the following year with something that conceptually almost couldn't be any more different. Microsoft Flight Simulator. And in the real time strategy genre, this genre swap has happened more than a few times. Relic went out of their comfort zone with Warhammer 40k Space Marine, and ditto for Creative Assembly with Alien Isolation. There are many more I'm sure, but this leads us to our headline topic, Westwood Studios and Command & Conquer Renegade. While some of Westwood's earlier games were indeed not real-time strategy, RTS was certainly what they were known for. Their confidence with the genre began with Dune 2, and would expand exponentially with the release of Command & Conquer and its subsequent sequels. By the time the early 2000s rolled around, Westwood had cemented themselves in the genre and created an IP that fans were in love with. One known for its engaging gameplay, creative campaigns, and unique storytelling. People were chomping at the bit for CNC, and Westwood games in general, in whatever form they came in. And as they were hard at work on their next blockbuster strategy title, the team had also been setting their sights on something else. Something in a completely new genre. The vanguard of a new lineup of games that would hopefully secure and safeguard the studio for years to come. Since at least as early as 1997, Westwood had been considering new frontiers for upcoming games in the Command & Conquer series. At the time, it was only a few years old, but it's not hard to imagine why Westwood would have seen the appeal of a more personal, action-orientated take on CNC. Especially in the late 90s, where first and third person shooters were becoming more and more popular. Obviously, a massive amount of work would be required to realise this idea. Most of what had been done on previous strategy titles would be useless in a 3D action one. A new engine would be required, and of course the associated expertise needed to create the 3D assets, gameplay systems, and everything else involved. The fruits of their labour would be first seen in a then unreleased tech demo created for the PlayStation 1, showing a few units, some of which look quite familiar, a player model, and some basic landscapes. Far from the finished product that was shipped five years later, but the bones of Renegade were forming. Work continued over the next couple of years, on both the game's engine and the content itself. Although its core was based off of Sir Render 3D, created by Finnish software developer Hybrid Graphics, the W3D or Westwood 3D engine was developed in-house at Westwood. Interestingly, while initially developed for Renegade, W3D was adapted in parallel to be used for RTS games too, the first being 2001's Emperor Battle for Dune. 
it proved enough of a success that it persisted past Westwood's closure in 2003, and under the helm of EA Los Angeles, became the strategy action game engine. Better known as Sage, it would go on to power Command & Conquer Generals, Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth, and more you've likely heard of, for years to come. In late 1999, the official announcement was made. Command & Conquer Renegade was coming, due to land at your favourite local games retailer in Spring 2000, Y2K notwithstanding. But things had not been as smooth sailing as it might have seemed from the outside, as the game missed its shipping date more than once. It's hard to see how much actually changed during development, but if early trailers were anything to go by showing a completely different main character and unfamiliar Nod soldier designs, the possibilities for what could have been are vast. After missing the first date, Westwood, somewhat hilariously, decided it to be prudent to create a video wherein Renegade's new main character visited the studio to ensure that the new release window was not missed. And you can guess what happened after that. Despite the multiple delays, the hype for Renegade remained steady, and after what probably seemed like an awfully long wait to desperate fans, it was finally released to the world in February of 2002. Initial reviews for the game were positive, if not exceptional, gathering scores mainly in the 70-80% to 80 range. Most were happy with the single player campaign, but the majority of positive feedback was directed towards the multiplayer, which saw two teams of eight battle it out in a unique action mode with RTS elements. For other reasons, Renegade also received its share of criticism, which we'll get into later. But overall, most agreed that Westwood had created a good game that unfortunately didn't bring enough to the table to cement itself in the genre. And looking back today, that's an understandable assessment, as it's really looked back upon with a nostalgia of some of the period's best, such as Battlefield 1942, Half-Life, or Halo. However, it did do enough to win itself a sizable fanbase, one that persists to this day, and to see why, let's start with the campaign. Nowadays, it's safe to say Renegade is mostly remembered for its multiplayer. Its campaign perhaps isn't remembered quite as fondly, but it was still a competent piece of Command & Conquer storytelling, and outside of that brought some competent game design to the first person shooter genre. Unlike previous games in the series, Renegade does not include unique campaigns for multiple factions. Instead, you just have the one for GDI, which sees you stepping into the shoes of Special Forces badass Nick Havoc Parker in the final days of the First Tiberium War. Originally depicted in Command & Conquer Tiberium Dawn, spread across 12 missions, Renegade's campaign takes you through a variety of locations and set pieces as you take the fight to Nod as you attempt to recover top GDI scientists abducted by the Brotherhood. The story makes the most of the game's intimate perspective by delivering its narrative entirely in-game and from the view of its protagonist. There are no FMV cutscenes, a la nearly every CNC game in existence, and there are no other viewpoints to the unfolding narrative. This is Nick's story end to end. The story itself is fine, if somewhat predictable, but thanks to over-the-top characters and some truly laugh out loud worthy dialogue, overall it's an entertaining gung-ho romp. Havoc is a huge prick, and he's incredibly arrogant, which makes watching him punch, shoot, and disparage his way through the story quite entertaining. His one-liners come full circle in the so bad it's good category, and it's almost like he knows he's on camera and he's making the most of his chance to perform for the audience. It's really quite good, I love it. As long as there isn't any conflict of interest. Conflict of interest? No. <laughs> I got interest in conflict. There was clearly a lot of effort put into how the story and cinematics are shown. Not content on flying an unmotivated 3D camera around, Renegade's camera aims to imitate a real-world, handheld look, as if someone's really there trying to focus on what's important. I really enjoyed how it's implemented. It would be easy to overdo it and cause the cutscenes to become a vomit-inducing shaky cam mess. Instead, it's an immersion-enhancing tool that helps to engage you in the world, and in Havoc's story. Overall, there's no huge impact on the wider CNC narrative. As you may already know, the Towers of Havoc and his team of Commandos Dead Six aren't mentioned again in any later CNC games. There isn't much world development or progression of Command & Conquer lore, which admittedly would be difficult for a game where its chronological sequel had already been released. But it's still an exciting 10 hour or so trip back to 2002 with big action and even bigger personalities. So if that's something you're looking for, 
Renegade does not disappoint. Released within throwing distance of bona fide shooter classics like Halo Combat Evolved and Half-Life, Command & Conquer Renegade emerged in a period where shooters weren't just becoming commonplace, they were starting to become the norm. They hadn't quite established the dominance over the strategy genre that they'd hold in the mid to late 2000s, but it was certainly leaning in that direction. In the early days of the genre, shooters had been as mindless and one-dimensional as their genre tag implied, meant for one thing and one thing only. They of course developed and grew over time, as with any genre, and when games like Half-Life started to come around, studios proved that the genre could be a vessel for narrative and storytelling that was as good or better than any other. All this is to say that Renegade would not succeed based on the simple fact that it was a narratively based shooter set in a beloved series that had never seen anything like it before. It had fierce competition from established contemporaries that had already garnered the acclaim Westwood was looking to take a piece of. But they aimed high and landed with a game full of non-stop action and player agency. Leaning into both camps of narrative and frenetic action, Renegade is less tactical than some of its contemporaries like Half-Life, but makes up for that with crazy non-stop shooting plus some light exploration to boot, though the latter often ends up being more of a boring necessity rather than an intriguing change of pace. Once you actually get playing, maps are vast and nod forces are plentiful, but often the map marker is your biggest enemy as it flips you every which way as you try to navigate through many of the game's astoundingly similar structures and bases. The biggest issue is that it doesn't show verticality, and since a lot of your objectives are in basements or on roofs, and a lot of the doors and interiors look remarkably alike, navigating the minutia of Renegade's missions can be a real pain in the backside. Thankfully, most of what you'll be doing in Renegade is shooting guys in red jumpsuits, which is served up frequently and in generous quantities. The combat is certainly a product of its time. There is a sizable variety of guns to use, but they lack depth and versatility. In modern shooters like Doom Eternal, every weapon has a purpose. There are upgrades, unique alternative firing modes, etc. Obviously that's not a fair comparison, but even compared to something like Half-Life 2, which is just a couple of years newer, Renegade is significantly behind. A lot of the guns are samey and don't provide any real reason to use them over their counterparts. Also, nearly every weapon is a hyper accurate laser beam, and this leads you to fall back on the same strategy of stun locking your enemies through rapid fire until they're dead. Leaving weapons like the pistol and sniper rifle squarely relegated to don't bother territory. Unless you need anti-vehicle capabilities via the rocket launcher or the ion cannon, you'll find yourself relying on the assault rifle and gatling gun almost all the time. Because of this, Renegade is left with quite a bland arsenal, with some weapons feeling nearly identical and others completely sidelined by being straight up worse than their contemporaries. But if you don't care about min-maxing and only using the most efficient gun at all times, then there is a lot of fun to be had here. The pure act of shooting is intoxicating thanks to the visually distinct designs of all the weapons paired with some great sound design and audiovisual feedback. And because there's so many enemies all the time, if you enjoy the pure glee of just holding down the trigger until not a wipe from existence, then looking over its mechanical shortcomings won't be that difficult at all. Another feather in Renegade's cap is its mission design. Most of them are lengthy with large maps, multiple primary, secondary and auxiliary objectives, and a mix of vehicular and infantry combat. It can be a pretty great sandbox where you decide how and when you want to engage the enemy. It's not all good news though, the structure of said missions is almost always the same, you do just move through a map, get to a building, clear out the building, and then move to the next one. Basically rinse and repeat for the whole game. And as I mentioned earlier, the often confusing objective markers and samey buildings mean you're constantly questioning if you're going the right way, which can be extremely frustrating. Renegade's gameplay leaves some things to be desired, absolutely. Even for its time, it wasn't regarded as the best shooter out there. But despite that, its sandbox mission design and occasionally bland but certainly vast array of weapons and vehicles make it still a lot of fun to play. And the fact that everything is Command & Conquer will be enough for a lot of people to still get a kick out of it, even today. On that note, I want to briefly touch on art direction. Being a CNC game, there's obviously a few things Renegade had to get right in order to smoothly slot into that universe. While the time period of the game means it's exempt from the grungier sci-fi approach taken by Tiberian Sun, it still needed to reference the original CNC 
and also makes sense as a logical stepping stone towards that evolved art style, taken by chronologically later entries. And at risk of sounding like an overzealous games reviewer, Renegade really makes you feel like you're in the world of CNC. Thanks to the scores of familiar looking units, names and places, all rendered in a completely new perspective that still remains familiar. Not as draped in their familiar red attire, and the same can be said for GDI and their penchant for gold. You'll recognise units from Tiberian Dawn everywhere, with some like Nod's Black Hand troops taking roles in the story that reflect their established in-game power level. The same goes for GDI, I mean heck, you're a GDI commando, you play as this guy, right here. Westward nailed the feel, with everything from sound effects to visual design to UI elements. But unfortunately, that doesn't negate the fact that the game is nearly 20 years old now. And unless you've created one of the truly exemplary games with a timeless art style, everything tends to look outdated eventually. I won't beat around the bush here, the graphics are old school. Like, really old school. Even for the time, Renegade wasn't pushing the bounds of visual quality. Released only two years later, Half-Life 2 is leagues better, though to be fair that game is in a class of its own. But even looking back at games like Unreal Tournament 2003, Renegade still does fall behind. Textures are pretty bland, and everything from soldiers to terrain is blockier than a stack of bricks. The special effects are also nothing to write home about, at least the draw distance is decent, and surprisingly the animations are actually quite good, especially in the in-game cinematics. While it looks comically old nowadays, for the time this was pretty groundbreaking in terms of characters actually emoting and being able to move their mouths as they spoke. And thankfully today we do have the Tiberian Technologies patch to bring the graphics a bit closer to modern standards. This community amalgamation of a bunch of fixes for Renegade includes the ability to play it at much higher resolutions than what were available at the time, as well as adds a toggleable V-Sync option, quality controls for the special effects, and a huge list of bug fixes and little features and fixes for single and multiplayer. Playing the game without it is not recommended, and in my opinion it renders it good enough if you are wanting to play Renegade in 2021. Playing at 1080, 1440 or 4K is crisp, bright and smooth, and that's good enough for me. Finally, let's talk audio. The voice acting is as campy as a story like this implies, and main man Havoc being extremely so. Some of his lines are just... wow. It's one of those new subs. Impressive. Are they armed? This one is. Bring them on. Hey, how about a gun? Try not to shoot me in the butt. Don't get me wrong, I love it, and it's a lot of fun. Renegade owns its campiness from top to bottom. Just don't be surprised to have your eyes roll back into your skull a few times. Sound design overall is quite good, and I love how a lot of the effects have been pulled from, or at least been heavily influenced by the original CNC. It really helps the immersion that you are an actual GDI commando that could be taking part in a mission from the RTS. Clan Conquer is a series known for its fantastic soundtracks, and Renegade, expectedly, did not disappoint in this department. In what would be Frank Klopacki's last full OST for CNC, it's an action-packed mix of guitar riffs and electronic tones, falling somewhere in between Command & Conquer and Tiberian Sun in terms of composition. Because of the first person perspective, it's more dramatic than previous games. The threats to the main character are more personal as they are vicariously threats to you, the player. There's not the inherent disconnect of real time strategy, where you're controlling tens or hundreds of units as an omnipresent god in the sky. Solid effort, nice job. Next topic. Renegade single player certainly had its fans, but the main thing it's remembered for and how it's managed to persist in many players game libraries to this day, is its multiplayer. One quick note here, it proved to be very difficult to capture real footage for the base game's multiplayer, thanks to the very limited player numbers and high ping servers. And since I needed more than just a fleeting clip, I reached out to fellow YouTuber Nick Graumans, who was kind enough to allow me to use some of his gameplay. Big thanks to Nick, there's a link to his channel in the description. In the appropriately named Command & Conquer mode, you'd fight in large scale battles of attrition as either Nod or GDI, with access to all of Renegade's large variety of weapons and vehicles. 
Imagine it like a game of Command and Conquer strategy, except all the ground troops are controlled by real players. Each team has a base with all the expected buildings, such as a refinery, power plant, defense towers, etc. And one team wins once the entire enemy base has been destroyed. You will start as a basic trooper, with a selection of classes to choose from. Tiberium harvesters will then go out and gather resources automatically, and refill players supply as they return to base. That money can then be spent on either becoming a unique character, with powerful weapons and abilities, deploying iconic vehicles to control such as the mammoth or stealth tank. It's almost like a CNC themed Battlefield game, if you ignore the fact that Renegade was released nearly 8 months before Battlefield 1942 ever saw shelves. Dang. Gameplay is heavily based around teamwork. One side working as a well-oiled machine will absolutely decimate an incongruent bunch of randies running around like headless chickens on the other. Buying the right vehicles and weapons at the right times, maximizing opportunities when the enemy is behind, and striking at critical weak points is the name of the game. It's an incredibly satisfying loop when everything is going well. If it's not a complete bulldoze by one team however, these tug of war style matches can go on for quite a while, with both sides vying for control of different parts of the map, attacking and defending silos and critical points, much like the RTS skirmishes it aims to emulate. Unfortunately I wasn't lucky enough to play it in its heyday. I was actually living in a place called the Cook Islands at the time, and we were just lucky enough to have a computer at all, let alone a stable internet connection for online gaming. It was Tiberian Sun and Age of Empires for me. Lucky for me, however, there are actually a couple of ways to enjoy Renegade's acclaimed multiplayer today, right now. The first is via a piece of community made and supported software called the W3D Hub, which you can download from the old mates over at cncnet.org. All you need is a copy of Renegade with the appropriate version number, and then you'll be able to browse and join a variety of servers, hosting everything from near vanilla examples to unique custom games that are, well, a mixed bag, to say the least. The main issue here is that the player base is minuscule. Being out here in New Zealand, aka No Man's Land, it was hard to find games with any more than a couple of players at times I was able to join. And even when I was able to, server pings were, well, pretty unreasonably high. I would say the best bet is finding a group of friends who want to play, then all joining a server together. Luckily though, there is another option, something I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with already. Renegade X is an entirely community made project which aims to recreate the magic of Command & Conquer Renegade's original multiplayer. It's a free download and it's built on the Unreal Engine and comes with full multiplayer support, bots and other modern amenities, like that classic Unreal Engine 3 texture pop-in that we all know and love. While it was intended to be a remake, it is now, for all intents and purposes, a spiritual successor, with a number of changes and improvements too great to list here. Developer Totem Arts began work on Renegade X in 2006, and the project's first public build became available 3 years later in 2009 as a mod for Unreal Tournament 3. Ever since then, it's been receiving updates and patches, even as recently as January of this year. It hit its first standalone build in 2014, and last year the announcement of Renegade X Firestorm was very positively received, obviously harkening back to the Tiberian Sun expansion of the same name. While it was scheduled to be released fully in late 2020, a delay saw it pushed to 2021, and so far there is no firm answer on when it will be coming. Still, the team has been with Renegade X for over 15 years now, so I have no doubt they'll deliver this time. But even without that though, the game is really fun to play, even for someone like me who's A, not very particularly good at shooters, B, playing on a 350 plus ping servers, and C, has no nostalgia for CNC Renegade at all. The class based system gives great variety on the gameplay style you want to pursue, and the arsenal of weapons have been done really nicely, with great sound effects and even better animations. Vehicles are well balanced too, they're priced fairly enough that even if you aren't very good at the game, you'll still be able to forward at least a couple of the big boys throughout the match, and aren't overpowered to a point where you feel like you can't win against them. Everything has its weakness, and everything can be countered. 
Smart players will know how to exploit these weaknesses the best, and that gameplay it provides makes for some surprisingly deep combat encounters. The map design lends to all this too, with lots of different ways to approach the enemy and run into hostile forces. There are wide open spaces where vehicles excel, tight corridors that limit the fighting just to infantry, and thankfully aren't at a huge size where you feel like you're running for minutes on end to get into the fight. I'm looking at you Battlefield. Renegade X is a real blast, and if you haven't tried it you absolutely should. It is free, so you've really got nothing to lose. The player base is big enough to where there's usually at least one or two decently populated servers going at pretty much all times, and if you can bring some friends too, then you're golden. You can even play against bots if there's no one else around to play with. You can grab the game at renegade-x.com, and if you really like it, you can support the team creating it with a little Tiberium ejection. They've been offering it free of charge for over 10 years now after all. Totem Arts have done a fantastic job here, and I really cannot wait to try Firestorm when it comes out, hopefully sometime soon. Since their closure, Westwood Studios Legacy has undoubtedly been the Command & Conquer franchise and the effect it had and continues to have on the real-time strategy landscape. Despite Renegade's generally positive reception, and the fact that it was the last game bearing the name Command & Conquer Westwood would ever release, it never reached the glory or level of influence its older siblings would. But Renegade still left a lasting legacy after Westwood shut down, and remains cited by many players as a genuinely fantastic hidden gem that was more of a victim of circumstance than anything else. The game was afflicted by quite a buggy release build, and that combined with good but not great reviews, and a genre that was getting increasingly busy with competition from developers across the world, are all possible symptoms of Renegade's limited success post-launch. The latter part I think is more likely, thanks to the fact that Westwood had actually planned a sequel to Renegade based around the Red Alert series, specifically Red Alert 2. According to this post on the old Petroglyph forums by a former dev, there was even a full vertical slice created as the final stage towards getting full approval from EA. However, in a joint decision by EA and Westwood, the game was killed as neither wanted to see it play second, or in this case third, fiddle to Battlefield 1942 and Doom 3, both of which were soon to release. This whole post is quite interesting actually, reading some people's thoughts on Generals, Tiberium Wars and its many variations, what happened with the cancelled CNC MMO, thoughts on the new CNC under the helm of EA, there's a lot here. If you would like to read it yourself, it's in the paste bin in the description. Despite having the ability to do so, Electronic Arts obviously aren't interested in reviving the concept of a Command & Conquer FPS. They've had the IP since 2003 after all. Thankfully, Renegade X has done as much as any other project could have, and has given players who want to experience that style of gameplay a way to do so. Furthermore, Petroglyph Games, the studio formed by former Westwood employees after its closure, seem to be harkening back to Renegade with the upcoming game Earthbreakers. Described as a team-based PvP multiplayer game with both FPS and RTS elements, the similarities are clear. Just look at the gameplay. Unfortunately, however, the game has been put on hold since April of this year, citing Petroglyph being approached by a publisher to work on an exciting new game that requires all their available resources. Maybe that new game is Tiberian Sun or Red Alert 2 Remastered. Maybe it's the sequel to Empire at War, or a brand new CNC game entirely. Or maybe it's none of those things. Who knows? It's all speculation right now. But whatever direction it takes, I'm sure we'll find more about it soon enough. Command & Conquer Renegade remains the black sheep of the series, but because of that it's also one of the most unique. While it wasn't a pioneer of the genre it slotted into, Renegade was unmatched in its execution, translating a beloved strategy genre into an action shooter, especially in how it integrated ideas from both genres in its multiplayer. It's rare you see something like that happen with big franchises, and even rarer when the game in question turns out to be good. Playing it in 2021, Renegade shows its age in more than a few ways but its campaign is still an enjoyable, over-the-top action romp with entertaining characters and creative, enjoyable sandbox mission design. The multiplayer was where the game really stood apart from its contemporaries, however, bringing concepts from multiple genres that made for a uniquely engaging, team-based experience. And while finding a game nowadays is difficult without bringing some friends along to fill each side, Renegade X has picked up the slack and remains the best way to enjoy that unique gameplay offering today. Renegade can be bought on Origin as part of the Command & Conquer Ultimate Collection. You can also pick up Renegade X for free at renegade-x.com. 
thank you very much for watching. And if you've made it this far, an extra thanks. I hope you've enjoyed this look back at one of the most unique entries in the Command & Conquer series. If you did so, please consider liking the video, leaving a comment for the great algorithm, and subscribing if you want to see more from me. Lastly, if you really like what I do here, then consider supporting me on the channel via YouTube memberships or outside via Patreon. Doing so helps me dedicate more time to each video, increase production values, and overall turn out better content for you guys. So a big thanks to Chocolate Shake, Crispy Robo Chicken, T Edits, Krizzy218, Dakayo, Jeremy Elgood, and Standby for Systems Nominal, who supports me at the Paladin tier. Cheers, mate. One benefit for doing this is having a question answered live at the end of the video. So, Standby for Systems Nominal asks, what would you do if you are a major stockholder of a company? And more specifically, he means major, like really major, assume that you have a lot of influence and you can basically cancel and green light whatever you like. So I'm going to answer this in a specific situation, let's say I'm now the god of EA. So in my mind I need to win back the kind of core gaming population while still make truckloads of money. So you know all the truckloads of money comes from uh, you know FIFA Ultimate Team and all the sports games but what I'm going to do to earn back the core fan base is to recommit to single player games that people love. Kind of doing what they've done already with things like Star Wars Fallen Order but really double down on that and look to franchises that people are you know people have loved for a long long time and would love to see rejuvenated. So Fallen Order, gonna make a sequel to that for sure. I'm gonna go to Petroglyph and I'm gonna say hey we're gonna make a brand new Command and & Conquer and pretty much let them have free reign on what they think would be best because I think they would do a pretty darn good job and maybe also go to them hey I want a Star Wars Empire at War 2 and really just let the developers take their time and make games that people uh, want to play and will reinstate their confidence in EA as a games publisher. So hopefully that's a good enough answer and uh, again I appreciate your support, thanks a lot. So thanks everyone again very much for watching and I will see you all next time.